When I look around and see the good things Singers come he forward, does come and join for me, I know I'm worthy of it all. Thank you, Lord. Okay, but his blessings he freely gives. I owe my life to him. I've got so much to thank him for. And I've got so much to thank him for. So much to praise him for, you see. He has been so good to me, and when I think of what he's done and where he has brought me from, I've got so much to thank. Yonder, I'll 
be there. I'm not sure what key I sing it in, but because Richard usually sings this song, but I'm going to try it in C. Long years ago, and out in sin, I had no hope, no peace within, down on my knees in agony. I pray to Jesus, saying, glad he set me free. I never shall forget the day when all the burdens from my soul were rolled away. It makes me happy, glad and free. I'll sing it, shout it, for he's everything to me. Now I can feel him by my side. Feeble steps. He comes to guide. When trials come, he comforts me. Through faith in him or sin, I have the victory. I never shall forget the day when all the burdens from my soul were rolled away. It makes me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing it, shout it, for he's everything to me. Oh, sinner, come to Jesus now. At his dear feet, just humbly bow. Confess to him your every sin. He'll save you, cleanse you, give you peace and joy within. I never shall forget the day. Sing it, shout it, for he's everything to me. Amen, yeah. Glory. Sister Bobby, you got a song for us tonight? Through his bitter anguish, 
He counted not the cost. He paid the price for you and me where the timbers cross. The old rugged hill became a battlefield where the war for the souls of men was fought. And as the battle raged, death, hell, and the grave they lost, and victory hung where the timbers crossed. Jesus shed his blood for you and me. Where the timbers crawl. One down, forty nine to go, brother. What do you want to say? <laughs> Thank you. Where to go? Listen, you, you think I'm telling a fib? My wife has to tell me to shut up sometimes at home. Amen.
started tonight, I want to remind you all that Sister Kim is having her ladies' ministry here at 3 o'clock, March 20th, on the Sunday evening service on March 28th, instead of having our normal service, we're having a memorial service for Sister Doris Singer, which is Sister Lori's mother that passed away. So we're still going to have preaching, she still wants preaching, and so we're still going to have a little preaching tonight, but it's going to be in remembrance of Sister Doris. So everybody is welcome to that. And again, that's going to be Sunday evening on the 28th of, of March. So please come to that. Um, I asked a few of you to pray, and I'm going to ask the church to pray. Uh, we normally have a concert to two concerts a year. We had none last year because of the COVID virus. But a lot of people are coming out of hibernation. A lot of people are saying enough is enough. A lot of people are getting antsy and they want to sing and play. So I'm going to uh, uh, ask you all to pray. And since we have a few things going on in March, maybe the first or the second Saturday of April, uh, I'm going to be making some phone calls to other churches and see who will volunteer to, to play and contribute music. And uh, I'd like as many of you as at all possible to attend that service also. It will be on a Saturday night, either starting at 6 or 5. Yes, brother. Make sure the weekend I'm off. The <laughs> weekend that you're off. Okay. Well, let, let's pr pr pray for that, that Brother Gary can uh, be there. Praise God. But anyhow, uh, let's let's keep that in mind and pray for that because you know what? It's time to start worshiping God Amen. and honoring God the way that yes. He wants Amen. to be worshiped and honored. Praise Amen. God. Worship the Lord today. You know what? It's uh, As we hear and read things, it sounds like things are getting worse out there. But you know what? We are we are covered under the blood of Jesus yes, Christ. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Amen. I know some of you have been sick and you've recovered. And, and you know what? God always will get us through. Praise God. And getting the COVID is not a death sentence. Many people have passed on. But you know what? There's always going to be sickness of some type. Always be sickness of some type. I remember a number of years ago uh, uh, down in my town, not my hometown, but the town I'd lived in 25 years, Brunswick, we had in Medina County a tremendous amount of Niles. Remember the Niles mm -hmm. disease with the, uh, with the, the uh, mosquito, uh, mosquitoes or whatever it was? So every time mosquitoes were around, we all went crazy. We're out buying those little zappers and putting them in our backyards oh, yeah, and all that to fun. kill the skeeters and so on. But you know what? Life still went on. Life still went on. Praise God. I was talking to a Christian lady that uh, wrote some of the books I handed out to you and if you didn't get one of these books, I'll be more than happy to give them to you. I talked to her today. She called me, and I gave her a praise report that many people like the books. I know even Brother Gary said he liked it, too. Oh, praise yeah. God. And uh, she was telling me a story. She goes, I don't know if you know, but way back many years ago, when tuberculosis was really the, the siege of the land, 
One out of every seven people got it. But guess what? Life still went on. Yeah. Tuberculosis centers went on all over. Uh, we used to have a nursing home called Golden Acres. That used to be the tuberculosis center here in Lorain that. County. The, the uh, county owns it now. The, uh, the, the city of Amherst, one of the two, owns it. It's empty right now. But, but the thing was, we still went on and did what we did as a nation and did as we did as a church. And God has laid in my heart from the first time that all this started to continue to do business as normal. Occupy until I come. Occupy until I come. So we're occupying tonight, praise God. God laid a few things in my heart that I've been dealing with the last few weeks. I shared a little bit with, with uh, Sister Mary was uh, uh, watching uh, the other night a little bit. I was talking to Brother Don and, and Sister Anita. And, and it's something that God laid in my heart to get a little bit of a deeper meaning with some scripture. We take scripture sometimes for granted. So tonight might be a little bit more of a teaching. But man, it's going to be truly anointed because I got into it this afternoon. And for four and a half hours did nothing but just meditate. And praise God and thank Him. And, and, and my eyes have been opening up more and more and more. And, and you know what? When we take things lightly, they don't become important to us, praise God. And the Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Knowledge is powerful, praise God. So I'm going to share some scripture with you tonight. I want you to take to heart. I want you not to take to heart, but, but, but to take deep in your heart, praise God. And I want you to take your Bibles out, and we're, we're going to do our thing with the Bible, but we're going to open up our Bibles and work our Bibles a little bit, our fingers a little bit tonight, praise oh, God. Right. But repeat after me with conviction of heart and of spirit. This, this is my Bible. This is the this truth, is the, truth the whole truth, and nothing and but the truth. truth. This is the available Word of God. God. Jesus is the Word. This is the good news, the good report, the sound doctrine. This is what believe in. Stand up. Live by and trust in. Thank you, Lord, for your holy word. Amen. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Yes. How many people know that words are powerful? Amen. The Bible tells us right off the beginning, God spoke everything into existence. Everything he spoke, praise God. Years later, we read in the book of Matthew that God used the word of God. <laughs> Jesus used the word of God to rebuke Satan. Man does not live by bread alone, but out of every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, praise God. So words are important. The Bible tells us if you want to turn, and I'm going to let you all turn and take the time to turn to these scriptures. We're not going to have many of them tonight, but it's going to be worth looking at tonight. And I pray that the Word of God, pray that the words go into your heart tonight. Praise God. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, as we speak tonight, as we teach tonight, Lord God, for the teaching is not my teaching, but your teaching, Lord God. Let your word go forth and accomplish what was intended to do. Let your word go forth, be a seeds, Lord God, spiritual seeds in their heart and in their spirit tonight, Lord God. Let the words open up bigger and deeper than they ever have before, Lord God. Let them come to a better revelation and understanding, Lord God, of what your holy word says. And Lord Jesus, we just praise you tonight. Amen. Ephesians 4.29. I'll wait till you get there. We have probably quoted this many a time in other churches, and this church especially, and as you know, we don't like to talk about people and slander, and that's a pet peeve of mine and all that, but God has opened up my eyes to something else, and I want to share this with you. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And God was speaking to me and said, what you're saying in private is it edifying to your ears. And I said, Lord, I'm not talking about anybody. I, I'm against that totally. I don't get into this. I don't want that. And he said, my word my word. Are you speaking my word of health? Are you speaking my word of prosperity? Are you speaking my word of wholeness? Are you speaking my word to yourself? Because when you talk, you hear yourself talk. 
I know I passed some of you on 28th Street and you're just ramping along and the radio's off. So I know you're talking to yourself. But what are you saying to yourself? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. That's anything contrary to the Word of God. Sometimes we, we doom ourselves. We, we curse ourselves. See, I don't, I don't believe in, in, in curses. Jesus took care of that. He became a curse for all of us. But in this day and time, because of lack of knowledge, we destroy ourselves by cursing ourselves and our children and our churches and our family. Corrupt communication just isn't talking about people. Corrupt communication is saying something that's contrary to the Word of God. I'm not, I'm out to anything. I've heard people, we said this the other day, asked a few people, and I talked to a few people, and we were discussing it. Sometimes people don't even know if they're saved. One day you feel that you're saved, you're on the mountain. And the other day you feel that you're at the lowest bottom of the pit. And you can't feel God. And you think God has abandoned you. But the Word of God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. It's not that God has abandoned us. Our feelings will deceive us. So sometimes we say it out of our own mouth. I feel that God has abandoned me. Glory. That's contrary to the Word of God. Yeah. So we're letting corrupt communication, Sister Bobby, come out of our own mouth. And sometimes our loved ones and family will hear that. And if they're not around, we hear it. Sometimes the one whispering in our ear is not Satan or God. Sometimes the one whispering in our ear curses and blessings are ourselves. How many people understand that? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, lifting up, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. What are you speaking to yourself? My whole message tonight is going to be centered on Proverbs 23, 7, if you'd like to turn there. We'll be in Proverbs for about four of these. Proverbs 23, 7 says, for, for as he thinketh in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. What does that mean? We hear it all the time. We used to preach in our business for years. If you think you can do something, you can. If you think you can't do something, you're right too. But it takes on a much, much deeper revelation than that. Sometimes, you know, I, I was talking to Sister Anita the other day, and and, 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 and Brother Don was listening, and, and, and I said, sometimes, you know, when I talk to someone, They'll say, you know what, Brother Ray, I don't know if I'm even doing God's work anymore. Sometimes it just feels like I'm going through the motion. Am I really doing what He wants me to do? And I say, you know what, you don't want to talk like that. You don't want to think like that because that's not how God wants you to think. That's not how God wants you to talk, praise God. Because even if you're just talking to yourself, you're cursing yourself. You're planting thoughts in your mind that, that you're not saved anymore. Now, sometimes people say, well, you know what, that's a bunch of garbage. But every one of us, at one time or another, in our walk, like that, it's never going to leave us. He's not going to throw us out. We are not outcasts. We are His children. And we're the children of the Almighty. We're the children of the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end, praise God. We're children of Jesus Himself. We're children of Almighty God. But out of our thoughts, we, we get this thought in our, in, our, in our heart and in our mind that, that things aren't right with me. Maybe, maybe, maybe I shouldn't go to church tonight. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't praise the Lord tonight. Maybe I shouldn't sing tonight. Maybe I shouldn't preach tonight. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Or, or maybe I, I should just hide away from the world. I talked to a few brothers and sisters earlier this week on Monday and Tuesday that are feeling that right now. And I started to bring it up. They go, how do you know that? Because I felt it too. They go, what do you do about it? I start praising God. And I start claiming that I'm a child of the living God. I'm going to speak it. I'm going to speak it. I'm going to speak it. I believe in this. And this is the truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. You know what? If you hear the truth enough, you will believe it. If you speak the truth enough, you will believe it. Praise God. Speak the truth. Speak what God says. Not what your mind says. Not what your heart says. Not what the brother or sister says. Not what the world says. But speak what God says, praise God. And you proclaim it and hold it in until you feel it. 
I told that to a sister one time, and she said, I've been doing it for three hours. Nothing's happening. What should I do? I said, do it for three weeks if you got to. She called me up about almost two weeks later, and she goes, you know what? I finally got it back. I feel God Almighty. I feel the, I feel the Spirit of God. I kept claiming it and claiming it and claiming it. You might have to claim it for 25 years. You might have to claim it for 21 days. Claim the Word of God. For as he thinketh in his heart, so he is. Here's why this is important. I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, if I think that I'm not right, if I think that I'm not saved, and I start telling myself that, and if I start verbalizing it, see, we can call those things that are not as though they are. I'm not talking about good things. I'm not talking about godly things. I'm talking about ungodly and, un and, un and unholy things. We can speak damnation to ourselves. Yes, yes. We can speak damnation to ourselves and our loved ones. If I start saying it enough, I'm not saved. Why do you even go to church? Got an old friend calling me up. Maybe, I, maybe I'll take him up on that drink tonight. Maybe I start going to places I shouldn't be going to anymore. Because in my heart I don't feel right. It gets quiet because we've all been there. Everybody's nodding. We've all been there. And the more we say it, the more we believe it, and the more we get back out into the world. I've seen too many brothers and sisters lose their salvation. Does God take it away? No, we give it up and we walk away. God is not an Indian giver. But I tell you what, we can be like the prodigal son and say, you know what, I'm leaving home. I'm leaving home. I'm leaving home. And we can leave home, but thank God we can always come back home. But here's the problem, people. Sometimes we die in the pig pen. Sometimes we don't make it back home. And guess what? We're lost. We're lost forever. That's the fact. That's the cold, hard facts. We have to be careful with the thoughts that we entertain in our hearts. Our hearts will deceive us, praise God. We need to protect them. Listen to this from Deuteronomy 30, 19. This you don't have to turn out. Just read it here. I want you to say in Proverbs for a moment. 30, 19 in Deuteronomy says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Do we speak life? Do we think life? Proverbs 4.23, if you'll turn there. Proverbs 4.23, simple verses, but very, very important verses. I'm not going to go through this fast tonight. Brother Al said he had 50 songs. We'd have, if we wanted to sing God bless him, we'd be here clapping all night long. We'll take the time to hear those 50 songs. I want you to take the time to hear God's word tonight. Amen. Praise God. I want it. Proverbs 4.23 Keep thy heart with all diligence. What does that mean? Guard your heart. In every way that you can, guard your heart. For out of it are the issues of life. God was asking me a while back, are you guarding your heart? Well, Lord, I pray. I fast. I read the Word of God. I study. I preach. I teach. Are you guarding your heart? Well, Lord, are you guarding your heart? Are you guarding your heart? Are you protecting your heart? With all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. How do I guard my heart not to get the wrong things in my heart? Not to get the wrong things in, in here. Am I around the right people? When nobody's around, am I telling myself negative things? I met a young man, his name is Fred. I hope and I do feel he'll be coming to our church very soon, the next week or two. 
Fred has a brain tumor. Part of his head is sunken in up here as you meet him. Nice young man. He's probably in his 40s, so to me he's young. We had, for a couple days, we spent some time together earlier this week. And he's a believer. He said the only reason why he's alive, he was one of five people that the Cleveland Clinic operated on with experimental operation a number of years ago. And he's alive not because of their operation, but by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. His doctors say he's a dead man walking. But he said something that really hit me and triggered this whole message off. He says, I believe in the power of God and the healing power of God. I believe in miracles. But I tie that in with having a positive attitude in life and a positive attitude and speaking positive things. And I started to talk to him. I brought up, I said, you know, brother, you brought up an interesting thing today. The church, we have all the scripture, but we're not too positive. Sometimes the secular world, I'm talking about the unsaved world, will take a principle that God has put into place. A principle of saying, speak life, speak positive. And I'll see the sinner man or woman make a success out of their marriage, their home, their business, their whatever they're involved in. But we as Christians, <laughs> we go out and we, 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 we speak the scriptures, but we don't have that positive attitude behind it. And we walk around sorrowful with their head down, saying, maybe I deserve this. Maybe I deserve the loss of this. I deserve the sickness. I deserve the lack. God never promises a rose garden. He'll get us through everything. But I know one thing Jesus said, I'll give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Amen. He wants you to have good Amen. things. He wants you to have health. He wants you to have well. He wants you to have a good attitude. Praise God. We don't have to go around with our heads shaking, our, our heads down and out, and being in the mullet grubs anymore. We can stand up and say, you know what? I'm a child of the living God. Amen. I need to learn His Word to educate me. Glory. As my friend used to say, we all need to be edumacated. One of my friends from down south. Guard your heart. Keep your heart with all diligence. Be careful what you put in it. For out of it are the issues of life. Amen. You ever notice how some people say, woe is me. Mary, if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. Why is everything happening to me? Now, I, my life is an open book. And unfortunately, sometimes my children's lives are too. I saw two of my daughters about my one daughter, Anita. She blames her sisters, blames me once in a while, blames her mother once in a while, blames her boyfriends, her ex-husband, blames the world about all her problems. Last I heard, she moved in with some people temporarily, but all these people are living in mobile homes with no water, no electric, no gas. Just her dog and some blankets to keep her warm. And she cries about all the problems that she has in life. Woe is me. Poor me. She got very upset with two of my daughters. And they said, the problems that you have are what you created yourself. Mm -hmm. And my one daughter started to speak to her, and the other daughter started to speak to the same thing. You have those problems because you speak them into existence. You give life to those problems. And she didn't like hearing that too good. Truth hurts. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We don't want to say, woe is me. Why is everything happening to me? There's people that are a lot worse off than we are. Yes, a lot worse off. If you made it to church today, praise God that someone drove you or you had a vehicle to get here. If you ate today and looking at some of you, some of you ate pretty good today, including myself. You know what? <laughs> i got to put myself in there, including myself. We had food today to eat, praise God. Think about that. And praise God that we got a place to come and worship. We don't have a big... Cathedral, we don't have we don't have three thousand members itself. You know what? We just have a little country church in the city. 
We have a little building here that we convert into a church house. But praise God, we got a place to come Amen. to worship Amen. God. Praise God. Amen. The lights are on, the gas is on, the water's on. Praise God. And sometimes our PA system works. <laughs> praise be to God. Turn to Proverbs 6 2. Praise God. People, this is important. I want you to leave here tonight with something to meditate on. I want you to leave here tonight that when you wake up in the middle of the night, you start thinking about some of the things we said tonight. Praise God. Proverbs 6 2. Maybe some of you can relate to this. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Notice he didn't say somebody else's mouth, but whose mouth? Your mouth. Our mouth. <clears throat> Thou art snared. You're trapped. You're held hostage. You are, you are snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken. You are overcome with the words <clears throat> of your mouth, of thy mouth. Not somebody else's mouth, but your own mouth. I don't want to see a show of hands, but think about how many things you've said today that you probably ought not to say. How many things did you say in your mind that you should not have said today? Turn to Proverbs 18.21, if you will. Thank you, sweet Jesus. The good thing about the book of Proverbs, it tells you how to live. If you ever want to get motivated a little bit, go to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 18.21. This is important, people. I want you to just take a deeper look. Let's not just read the scriptures tonight. But it says here, Sister Mary, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Not just Life, we know life, we can speak life. The Bible tells us to speak life. But we speak death to others. We speak death to ourselves. I remember I had a co-worker years ago. And I was a young Christian at the time, but and even though I understood the power of words, we still say stupid stuff. I've said many a stupid things. Who's guilty of, don't raise your hand, I'll... I'll I'll get on my back and raise up both my feet and both my hands. I've said a lot of stupid things. And I said about this young man, I said, that guy, man, he couldn't give, he couldn't give a unit away. He's not going to amount to anything. And he overheard me a little bit. Then later I apologized, but how many people know once you say something, it's hard to take it back? Because once you say it, it's already in here. I can't take it back. Well, sure enough, a few days later, he came in and he says, I'm never going to be able to get this job to work out for me. I'm just not cut out for this. I felt so condemned inside. God God was touching me. I was already a Christian at the time. I said, I should have never had even thought that. I should never have even said that. But because I said it, and this man looked up to us as being in supervision, I planted a negative seed in his mind and in his heart. I couldn't take it back even though I tried. And then I found out that we do it ourselves. How many times have you had a task before you and say, man, this is overwhelming. I heard three people use the word overwhelming since Saturday. What I'm doing is overwhelming. <laughs> I'm not going to get it done. Somebody else said, I got an overwhelming task. And the other person didn't say overwhelming. They said, I am just overwhelmed. And I've been there too where I said, man, I don't know how I'm going to get this done. I just feel so overwhelmed. And then I think, God, forgive me for even thinking that. Lord. Forgive me, Lord, for thinking that. Because when you've given that, you've given, you've given, you've given a mile to the enemy. You've given a mile to cursing yourself. Because I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You know, by the yard is hard, but by the inch is a cinch. My daughter Tabitha hates that. Now she's using it with the kids, but I've used it since she was a little girl. By the yard is hard, but by the inches of a cinch, just taking an inch at a time. You won't feel anxiety. You won't feel overwhelmed. You can get the job done. How many of you ladies and you guys, you know, you're, you're, 
You come home and you got dishes piled up and you got clothes you got to wash and dry. And you got to pick up after the dog and or the cat and you got all this stuff and you just feel oh, overwhelmed. And then you got to make dinner and somebody calls you and that one person that calls you on the phone that you don't want to answer because you know you're going to be on it for at least 45 minutes, but you answer it. And then you're on for 45 minutes and you can't get off. Some of you are smiling. You must have called each other. <laughs> And then you find out you got to go to church tonight. Tonight's church night at 7 o'clock for church. Oh, Lord, it's, 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 eight, it's 6.33. i got to get to church, and i got nothing to wear. And I haven't taken a shower today. And let me put on a little bit more perfume or cologne here, and I'll fly down to church, and hopefully nobody will uh, uh, sit next to me. Maybe they'll show, show distance tonight. <laughs> Some of us can relate to that. But Proverbs 18.21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Are you speaking life to yourself? I'm not talking to others. We normally always talk about to others. To yourself. The reason why we're in the rut, the reason why we don't get out of the boat, the reason why we stay sick, the reason why we stay in poverty, the reason why we stay broke, the reason why we stay depressed, is we don't get out of the boat. Some of you are pointing to yourself. We need to get out of the boat a little bit. We get out of the boat by thinking what God wants us to think Amen. and say in our heart. Praise God. Let's turn to Proverbs 13.3. How many people is enjoying this? Is this all right tonight? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Proverbs 13.3. I got a whole different understanding on this, this, this proverb just recently. It says, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that opens wide his lips shall have destruction. I used to think, well, if someone starts mouthing off or saying something too much, maybe they're going to get punched out. Well, that kind of would fit, wouldn't it? But that's not what God's saying here. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. You want life? Shut your mouth. Amen. Amen. I had some duct tape I forgot to bring in from my van. True story. If you look at my console, it's out there. I was going to bring duct tape and say, we need to duct tape everybody's mouth sometimes. Our own mouth. My mouth. Yeah. Well, you can borrow my duct tape, brother. <laughs> I got some good stuff at hand. <laughs> Listen to that. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. Don't curse yourself. How many times have you said, I'm not talking about your brothers. I'm talking about you. Because I'm guilty of this too. I'm never going to get over this situation. I'm never going to get over the sickness. I'm never going to do any more than what I'm doing right now. I'm not going to accomplish any more than what I'm doing right now. If we have that attitude always, we would never sing a song, we would never play a note, we would never preach the word, we would never testify or witness. God has called us to be a great witness. And he has given you the Holy Spirit to fill your mouth when you need to speak. He'll fill it, praise God. How many people understand that? Be careful, be careful, be careful of what we say. Guard your mouth. You'll have life. If you don't guard it and speak anything, you'll have that too. As a man thinketh, so he is in his heart. If I feel that I'm a nobody, I become a nobody. If I feel I'm unsaved, I could, I could backslide. If I feel I'm not healed, guess what? I'm not going to be healed. If I feel I'm not delivered, I'm not going to be delivered. Well, Brother Ray, some people say they're healed and they don't get healed. God takes them. Well, they're healed on the other side. Amen. Amen. They had a problem with this, problem with that. They never got delivered. Well, if they're a Christian, God has delivered them on the other side. Yes, God. How many Praise people know that people, Christians, Praise suffer God. with addictions? Christians Thank suffer you, with Lord. disease. Christians Thank suffer with depression, Lord. just like everybody else. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Turn to 1 Peter 3.10. We're talking about how important the tongue is. Not just for others, but for yourself. 
get a little bit of New Testament here. 1 Peter 3.10. Say amen when you're there. Amen. For he that will love life and see good days. How many people love life and want to see good days? Amen. All of us in here. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from what? Evil. Evil. And his lips that they speak no guile. Again, we're not just talking the snake talk. We're not talking the sun. We're not talking God. I'm talking about contrary to God's word. We're not going to be able to accomplish it. It's not going to be able to happen. But we sing and we say every every week just about God is a way maker. He'll make a new door. There's no door. He'll put a door there. Praise God. Yes, He will. And by His stripes we are and we're healed. Praise God. We hold claim to that. And he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love of love, and a sound mind. Praise God. Love and sound mind today. Praise be to God. Matthew 12, 36. In the Gospel of Matthew 12, 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. God had me look at that a little bit differently than what we normally preach. An idle word could be a stupid joke. Making fun of something could be anything. But listen to what it says here. I want you to look at this a little bit different. That every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account. What God spoke to me was this. I'm not going to have an account on the day of judgment. I'm going to have an account right now. Right now. If I speak something stupid or silly I shouldn't be saying, I'm going to have an account right now. I'm never going to get this done. <laughs> I'm never going to get well. Well. Those are idle words. Those are words contrary to the Word of God. That's right. And if I speak those, I'm going to have an account right now. Yes. People, when I tell you about my father, and my, I, I speak to him and I've been praying with him and talking to him. We've never had him sick in his life until this past year and a half. And to see the strong six foot one man sick, hurting, and I just talked to him yesterday on the telephone. And almost crying out to get out of pain. And I've had to sit him down and tell him, if you speak death to yourself, you will die. And a year ago, he got rid of his car and everything else, Brother Dean, and he just wasn't going to drive anymore. He said, it's over with. I'm in too much pain, too sick, can't get around. I'm going to give the house away now. So I don't you know, I don't want to move in with somebody. I don't want to go to a nursing home. I just might as well up and die. So you know what I told him? He said, you might as well do it then. He said, I thought you'd say something encouraging. I said, well, how can I say it? You've already said it. You've already cursed yourself. I said, you want to drive again? Tell yourself you're going to drive. Go out and buy another car. Get yourself out of bed. And then when someone looks at you like, you don't understand the pain I'm in, the misery I'm in. No, I don't understand. I'm, I'm not experiencing the pain he's experiencing. But I know what the power of God can do. Yes. I know what the Word of God can do. I know what being positive can do. Yes. Guess what? He got himself another car. He's driving. And on Monday he had two doctor's appointments. And I said, how did you get there? He goes, I drove myself. And he just got out of the hospital over the weekend, and my sister said they shouldn't even let him go. His legs and feet are swelled up from the water. He can't get rid of all the water and assistance. He still has a broken back. The pain is still there. He's got six months with this, this, uh, 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 this shingles, and th 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 there's no other name for it. They don't know what it is. They just don't know what to do. They can't give him anything. And they won't give him any pain pills. But he's still talking good, still reading the Word of God, still claiming it. I go, praise be to God. Yes. You know what? We got him a little bit longer, praise God.
Because if you give up and you quit driving, you you feel that you're doomed and gloomed and dead, guess what? It ain't going to be long before you are in the casket. That's right. That's right. I'm, I'm just telling you like it is, people. Praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. That's your nephew. Turn to Matthew 12, 37. What God has been showing me the last four or five weeks, people, is that his word isn't just for us in general. It's for us in general, but it's for me. It's for you individually. Listen to this. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. And by thy words thou shalt be what? Condemned. Sometimes we feel that has to do with salvation, and it does. But you know what? We're condemning ourselves right now on this side of the realm. By our words. And it didn't say just the words of others. It's by my words. Thy means my, my words. Are condemning me. Let's turn back to Proverbs 10.11 if you will. And I'm not going to keep you too much longer. But this is something I felt that needed to be done. And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll say this, and I don't say it to hurt anybody or myself. I'm sure I'll say something stupid before the day's over. Or think something I shouldn't be thinking before the night's over. But you know what? We're a work in progress. Amen. We're a work in progress. We're a work in progress. Proverbs 10, 11 says, The mouth of a righteous man is what? A well of life. But violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. The mouth of a righteous man or woman is a well of life. You have a well of life in each and every one of you. The Word of God says that God is as near as your lips, as near as your mouth. Praise God. And Proverbs 16, 24 says, Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. And when I started to look up the original Greek on, on, on pleasant words, it wasn't speaking of just niceness. It was speaking words of health, words of encouragement, words of prosperity. When I speak with God's word, <laughs> it's a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones, praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Lord. Glory to the name. God is good. Amen. God is good. Mark 11, 23 through 24 says this. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, and thank God we're the whosoevers, shall say unto this mountain, that mountain can be any problem that you have, any situation you have, any disease that you have, any lack that you have, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his what? Heart. There's that word heart again. But shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you have received them, and you shall have them. Amen. I'm going to leave you with these thoughts tonight. I don't know who wrote this originally, but it says this. Listen to these words. Watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your character and values. Watch your character and values, it becomes your destiny. What we think, we become. We become. So true. I believe with all my heart, and this message wasn't for all you, and God's been dealing with me for a few weeks now. I'm going, Lord, I've been preaching things like that a little bit uh, uh, in the business for years, but now 
and I've been preaching it in church too, but, you, but he's getting in and saying, you can have whatever you want. You want health, you can have health. I've been dealing with pain four or four or five weeks ago and was limping around a little bit. God's dealing with me in that. And when people would say, are, are, and, and uh, I'm not going to mention the brother, he says, I could see something's wrong with you, and I don't even want to talk to the person. It's like, like get, me, get away from me. Get away from me. <laughs> I'm not going to mention who he is. But no. But anyhow, no, but, but I, I love the brother dearly, but he's saying things I don't want to hear. See, I don't want to hear it because if I hear it, I may say it. And if I say it, it gets down in here, it starts to affect me. So I'm not going to just be hurting a little bit. I'm going to be going around like this and saying, Mary, you carry the 50 pounds of potatoes in, honey. I can't do it. You know? We, we have to be careful of who we surround ourselves with. And I'm talking about good, intended people. And you know what's my bad be, Brother Pete? And I'm sure this happens to you. I hate this when I go to the doctor. And I got a n nice doctor, Dr. Babbage. He's one of the best doctors around. He's got a good man. Is he a good doctor? But here's the problem. He said, we want to run this test. And I go, if I don't need it, why? He goes, because at your age, I hate that. <laughs> at your age. I said, what does it have to do? I don't feel sick. I don't need it. Well, at your age. And you know what I hate? This comes from my kids all the time. Dad, you're 66 years old. You can't be lifting stuff. You can't be moving stuff. You can't be doing that anymore. I hate that. Because as soon as they start saying it, I start looking in the mirror a little bit. Yeah, man, I'm looking at my dad. Man, look, my dad's face is in the mirror now. Man, I am 66 years old. Those boxes look awful heavy. Oh. <laughs> Al, Gary, come and move these boxes with me. Yeah, <laughs> See what I'm talking about? See what I'm talking about? <laughs> She'd be frying bacon. And now, you know, when I fry bacon, I kind of cut it in half and I put it in and you know, make it look nice so I have a little nice strips. My mother would throw the whole pound or two of bacon. Anybody really? You just throw yep. the whole thing in a big skillet and you just mix it up and fry it up. Okay? Okay. okay? Mary's smiling because she must do that at times. So anyhow, she'd fry it up like that. And then she'd have the toast and all that. And we didn't have the fancy toasters. Sometimes she'd make it in the old toaster or even put it in a bread rack, you know, the mm -hmm. rack and, and, and the thing. And we'd get up around 7 o'clock. House would smell of food already. It was nice and warm. You should turn up the heat. We put our, our school clothes were already laid out and we get dressed. And we didn't have just cereal in the morning. We had eggs and bacon about every morning, praise God. Then we went off to school. But here's why I'm saying this. She would get the flu and sick all the time. And I look back over the years, she had not the best life physically. She had a lot of breathing issues and a lot of problems. And 21 years ago, we, we lost, well, actually it was 24 years ago, they removed a lung from her, and she only has half of another lung, she has emphysema on top of that. We almost lost her. But even now, until recently, she wouldn't get up at 5, five in the morning and make breakfast, but she would still make dinner on Thanksgiving and Christmas, even when nobody was coming to the house, just in case they came to the house. As sick as she was, and me being a kid, I remember her blowing her nose and, and snot just running out all over and all that. And her eyes are real puffy and, 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 and she couldn't even move hardly. But she always had breakfast on the table. Pretty always hot. dinner at night. See, she didn't go around saying, I'm sick. Mom, are you sick? No, I'm okay. Mom, you're too sick. To no, I'm okay. Just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad was the same way. And I look and say, man, what's happened to that? Say, say we got a hangnail. We tell them, I got a hangnail. I can't work today. My hands are chapped. I can't wash dishes today. I'll just... See, we, we put curses on ourselves. We put limitations on ourselves. And then when it comes to confessing God as Lord and Savior, and I've done it. See, I've done it. I was guilty of it for 10 years, people, sitting in the back of the church. And if you don't believe me, talk to the people that know me, that come to our church and other churches, that have seen me. 
They'll tell you, I wouldn't lift up my hands to praise God. I wouldn't testify. Because I had it in my own mind, my own heart, I was unworthy. I was saved because I confessed Jesus Christ. So I'm gonna get it. I get into heaven's gate. That's good enough for me. But see, God wants much more out of every one of you in here. Every one of us is called to be a witness. I used to say, don't look at my life. I ain't too good of a witness. I was not good, not because the devil planted seeds, but my own mind, my own voice, what was in my heart. I'm not good enough. I'll never be good enough. I'll never be like the preacher up there. I'll never be like the sisters up there. Those are the holy of holies, man. Those are the good ones. But I'll sit back here and I'll be nice to people and, and I'll praise God in my own way and put my tithes in and if I can help move something or whatever, that's okay, but I'm going to just be quiet. But see, when we fill that in our heart, we'll never do anything for God. That's right. God wants you all to step out in faith. Yes, He's saying, I want you to have the spirit of Peter and step out of the boat and yes. come to me. Yes, well, I'm not a preacher or teacher. That's okay. God will fill your mouth. Amen. I'm not a singer. Most of them aren't either. Go ahead and sing with them. I'm not putting anybody down. We're all singing. Al could probably do it professionally, praise God. He's got a voice in him. Yes, Sister Bobby, you got a voice, praise God. I remember the first time I heard yet Brother Tommy's man, man, that woman's got, got a voice. Mm -hmm. And you know what? This is true. I mean, if I could sing like that. See, I curse myself. What's my pet peeve in here? I can't sing. I do it all the time. Maybe I had to start coming and saying, you know what? I'm going to sing praises to God. Amen. I need Lord. to work on myself a Praise little bit. Lord. But I remember Sister Sandra the first time I preached when I got up there to the Lord. Man, if this is what you called me to do, I'm going to do it for you. And I, and I, and I prayed. And I said, Lord. And he confirmed it three times within eight days. And I remember coming to preach. And I said, I'm a minister of God. I don't have my license yet, but I'm a minister of God. It don't matter if I get the paper or not. I'm a minister of God. Amen. The Bible says he's going to fill my mouth. The Bible says he's going to do that for me. I believe in the Bible. I believe in that. I believe in every word. And I remember doing my first preaching. I come off the pulpit. I don't even remember Brother Dean what I said that night. But remember Brother Vern? Brother Vern came over. Vern was only this high, by the way. Vern came over and he said, Brother, I didn't know you could preach. I was thinking aside, I didn't know either. <laughs> And then somebody else came up and said, Brother Ray, where have you been preaching at? I'm going, Everywhere. In my mirror. God, God will call you and qualify you. Yes, he will. He'll fill you. But what I did all that week is say, I'm a minister of God. I'm a minister of God. I'm going to do this because of Him and through Him. I'm not going to do it because of me. Because I can't do it. If I get up there myself, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. But he can. Amen. And because of that, I can now say I can do it through him. Through him. Through him. Give him glory. I'm healed through him. Silver and gold I have none but such as I have. And what I have is because of him. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, stand up, rise up, and, 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 and walk. Believing in your heart. Being careful. Glory. And you have to cut that arthritis stuff out. i got to quit saying I can't sing. We've got to start praying. I can sing. Amen. Maybe we'll surprise everybody one night and just come in and sing. say, come on, hit it, uh, uh, brother. I'll play that song. <laughs> you know what? All things are possible with God. Amen. Amen. All things are possible. As a man believeth, so he is in his heart. As a man believeth, so he is in his heart. As a woman believeth, so she is in her heart. Praise God. Praise God. I, I, I pray that you got something out of tonight. We laughed a little bit. Some of us were pointing fingers to each other a couple of times. That's all right. Okay. We've all, we're all guilty of it to some degree. 
And that's what, what preaching and teaching is about a little bit. Say, hey, I want to... I, 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 it's not that we want to convict anybody. Sometimes I say, well, that message, that message was for this old boy here. Say, I want to get better. I want to... I, I, I believe in this, Sister Bob. You can better your best. We can take whatever we're doing, Gina, and we can better it. We can better our best. And we do it for His glory, not for ours. Right. Not for the That's church, right. uh, the name of the church. Not for our own personal glory, but... For his glory, praise yeah. God. Amen. We can better our best. And when people see that, and they say, man, how are you doing that now? How are you doing it at How are you handling the pain? How are you handling the suffering? How are you handling your loss? Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still going to praise him. Yes. And he is more than able to deliver me. But even if he Thank doesn't, Lord. even if I go to the fiery furnace, even if he does it, I'm Thank still going to praise his holy name, for he's worthy to be praised. Will you all stand tonight? Thank you, sweet Jesus.